feeling weighed down trying to grow your business and achieve freedom? Author, life, and business coach Philip Ride knows how to break the 12 invisible chains holding entrepreneurs back from reaching their full potential. Join us and Philip's learned his proven frameworks for identifying and smashing through the internal and external barriers that keep you locked into the status quo so you can unlock transformational growth on your own terms. This episode of the Lead Machine Growth Show is brought to you by Lead Machine, the step-by-step tech easy system for getting leads online. Are you struggling to get leads from your lead magnet? Are you tired of seeing low conversion rates and losing potential customers? It's time to revive your lead magnet and start attracting more leads. Download our free report, 10 Deadly Lead Magnet Mistakes That Are Costing You Leads, and learn how to create a high converting lead magnet that engages your audience and drives conversions. Don't let common mistakes hold you back any longer. Revive your lead magnet today and download your free report at www.getleadmachine.com forward slash deadly. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show, where you will discover how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Paul Guyen, the mastermind behind the Lead Machine, introduces you to trailblazers who inspire you to implement life-changing solutions and systems you can model to nurture your leads and get your offers seen by your ideal clients who will invest in themselves and you. Be sure you visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, tune in and get ready to transform your vision into reality. Welcome to the Lead Machine Growth Show. I'm Paul Guyon, your host, Lead Machine Coach, and founder of the Lead Machine Mastermind Group. And I'm dedicated to helping you tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level, let's get this conversation started and turn your dreams into reality. Philip Ride is an author, coach, and entrepreneur dedicated to helping people break free from the invisible chains, holding them back so they can live a life of freedom on their own terms. After recovering from a broken neck injury in 2020, Philip went on a personal transformation and development journey. This led to him to identify the 12 key chains that keep people stuck, ranging from relationships and fear to perception and pressure. Drawing on his 20 plus years of experience founding startups and working in the video game industry, Philip created frameworks, models, and a four-step process to help people recognize these change and take action to break through them. He is the author, author of Watch Us Play, A Parent's Guide to Managing Screen Time, Online Safety, and Improving Math Skills. In his latest book, uh, which just launched, Finally Find Freedom, outlines his signature 12 chain model. He also hosts the Unchained podcast, where he interviews high performers about their broken chains in business and life. And when he's not writing or coaching, you can find Philip scuba diving, skiing, or seeking out new adventures with his partner, Hannah. He may even be sporting a pair of bright pink shorts. Oh, wow. Uh, Philip's purpose is to help people unleash their inner champion and live life of the fullest of their on their own terms. And I, I love that idea. And the pink shorts. Wow. Uh, so, Philip, uh, I'm, it's it's an honor to have you here today. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Great to be here. And that introduction, what what can I say? I think you've, you've covered <laughs> all the different areas that I, I've been through. So I'm looking forward to going into a bit more detail and, and helping people understand the journey that I've been on and, and now how I'm supporting others. Yeah. And so... What was it? What was the the spark that ignited this passion that's burning in you? I can just tell tell you just wanting to unleash it. And uh, uh, what was the thing that helped you um, help you break free of those chains of your own? Because you rec- you must have recognized your own's and and that uh, that that broken neck injury must have been a, a huge setback for you. So let's let's go back to that. Well, that is actually the thing that I guess started this journey. So. January 2020, most people think 2020 was a horrible year for other reasons, which it was. We know Mm -hmm. that. Um, And it certainly impacted me as well. But in January, before the lockdown started, 
I broke my neck playing sports and I had physio for seven weeks, just thinking it was muscle stiffness. And, you know, I couldn't move my head and the drive back from you know the sport that I was playing back home was really difficult because I couldn't turn my head to look in my mirrors. Um, and that's oh. <laughs> some of the stuff that I uh, include in the book, but it was seven weeks after my injury, after that, the incidents before I actually knew that it was broken. So I'd had seven Ooh. weeks of physio before I then went and saw a consultant, got some scans, was sat down in the office and they were like, yeah, uh, broken neck, C5, C6. Um, we suggest plate and screws, which Ooh. would have been probably six hours of surgery. Um, so they had to have gone in through the fronts, put some you know, plate and screws in, and then also go in from the back, uh, which would have, again, extended the time because it's effectively two different operations in one. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm not sure about this. Uh, I don't know that I want somebody going in front and back trying to put, put screws into my neck. Um, mm -hmm. It was a question for the insurance as well. I couldn't afford it at the time. The insurance were umming and ahhing whether they wanted to, to contribute. So I ended up deciding not to have the surgery. You know, I took that decision away and said, I'll make the decision. I'll just see what happens. So I left it to, to heal naturally. Then obviously we had all the COVID lockdowns and businesses struggling. A lot of them around the world struggled. Mine was exactly the same because a large part of my business was event-based. So those yeah. suddenly disappeared. So yeah. I then struggled to, to keep the business going through 2020, trying to pick up some online projects and bits and pieces. Thankfully, you know, my partner, has always been very supportive. So we managed to, to get through that. And then 2021 is when I actually started my personal development journey. I saw an advert on YouTube. You, know, you may think that's funny. And it's like, oh, okay, let's see what, what this is all about. Clicked it. And I was like, what have I got to lose? Okay. Yeah. I've been given a second chance because I didn't die on the rugby field with my broken neck. Because if it had been any worse, that could have been the outcome. I've been able to keep the business going in some shape or form. So what does my future look like? What are those next steps for me? So I started my personal development journey, uh, took a, a course, was asked some difficult questions like what impact and contribution had you made to the world? And that's what started me thinking. So although my new book, Finally Find Freedom, is the, the latest, newest part of that journey, yeah. since 2021, I you know, I've been looking at everything to say, you know, how can I use my knowledge or my experience to support others? How can I have that impact? How can I contribute? So the first part of that was, you mentioned that the book Watchers Play was about supporting parents because my background is in the video games industry. That's where I'd worked for, yeah. for 20 years. So it's like, okay, how can I use this knowledge and experience that I've got? My partner is a teacher. She needed some resources and a lesson plan for her students. I knew that they loved video games. So we're like, ah, oh, maybe that's how I can contribute. So we created that. And on the back of that experience, I started creating maths practice sheets and frameworks and tools that teachers could use and parents could use. And then interviewing child psychologists ah. and parents about managing screen time. And, and so that was, I guess, some of 2021 and into 2022, and then earlier this year in 2023, I was creating some slides and, um, you know, some documentation for a four day online challenge that I was planning to run for parents around managing screen time and online safety. And as I started creating the slides, I created the framework and the model, which is the 12 chains. Originally, it was going to be 12 chains that impact parents around mm -hmm. screen time and managing safety and video games and relationships with tech and things like that. But I, I looked at it and went, actually, all of these things, it's not just about that context of screen time and safety. It's actually life. You mentioned yeah. perception, pressure, relationships, fear, convenience, time, all of these 12 chains. It's like, that's actually a life model because yes, I recognized in my own life, some of these things that impacted me, some of them I had broken through. So wow. it started to change my perception Again, perception as one of the chains. And uh -huh. it's like, ah, oh, okay, maybe this is now what I should be focusing on. This is how I can actually have more of an impact and support more people. And that's what then led to me writing the new book and, and changing the direction of my coaching. So where it was parents, it's now, you know, people who feel stuck and frustrated and wants to 
take that next step but don't necessarily know how, if I can help them uncover the chains in their own life and give them the tools, my hope is that they can then move forward and, and work towards the dreams that they have for themselves. Yeah, and, and entrepreneurs and parents have some like the, the similar challenges, uh, especially um, there's really not a, as a parent, there's no rule book, there's no guide, there's no, you know, you're in it, you're all alone. And as an entrepreneur, you're in it and you're all alone. And it's it's all on you, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur and you don't have a partner to support you uh, or a team yet, you know, as you're, as you're starting out. So uh, I can see how they, there's a correlation. It's interesting that you wrote a book about managing screen time when you're when you are creating a video, uh, video games where you want them to have maximum screen screen time so they can they can move through your uh, through your world and through your game and whatnot. That's interesting. So you must have must have uh, recognized that early on, possibly through uh, through Hannah that uh, that that was also an issue that that's there's time for game and there's time for learning. There's time for, uh, for, uh, other things. Everything has, has, has a time. So, uh, that must be where that came from. Is that, is that about it? Is that, is that how it came it, about? It was actually through conversations with parents. So originally oh, okay. I hadn't thought about focusing on screen time because screen time for me as somebody who had played games and worked in the industry was okay. Yes. If you have the self-control, great you should be able to you know self regulate manage that time as you see fit it was then as i was having conversations with parents about using the video games that their kids already play to improve my skills so minecraft ah. fortnite roblox things like that all the parents were like this is great i love this i can actually use the games that they play and improve their math skills okay i understand that but the feedback ah. that i got from the parents was I don't know that I can use this right now because I have a bigger challenge. I have a challenge around screen time. So ah, that's, okay. I guess it was for me, if I don't solve this challenge of screen time, I'm not going to be able to get the parents to think about using those games to improve maths. Right. Okay. So that's where I then said, right, well, I've got the maths bit sorted. I've got frameworks for that. I've got all the resources. How do I solve this other challenge? And that's where I then interviewed parents and child psychologists and industry experts from around the world to say, share with me what you know, what you already use, what's worked for you. So I then compiled all of that, sprinkled in a couple of stories from my own experience of growing up as someone playing games. So mm -hmm. I actually interviewed mm -hmm. my mum and got her perspective of me growing up playing games and spending five hours a night locked in my bedroom, practicing for tournaments and things like that. And so, yes, that then became a core part of my first book. Right. Okay. So in the sport, you mentioned the sport, uh, you, you said it's playing sports uh, in, in the, in the States, we, we, we're not sure what sport, sport you meant, but you meant rugby. Is that correct? I did, yes. Yeah. Okay, so I that's... played rugby from the age of 10 years old. Right. Yeah. That's a rough game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, not as much padding as, as American yeah. football. I enjoy watching American football. I've been to, you know, a number of the matches that have happened at Wembley in London. Um, uh -huh. you know, it, it's great to watch, but yes, it's, you know, rugby is a different type of physicality with a lot less padding a lot less padding and you can break your neck <laughs> so, uh, yes absolutely yes, yeah and so you mentioned uh multiple businesses and you mentioned you worked with uh in the the corporate world with uh in the video game industry with did you actually work with some of those games you mentioned or or something else uh the uh so, uh, companies I that did, you work with i did both sides um so a large part of the work that i did was setting up events and things, doing marketing campaigns and oh, advertising okay. and things like that. Ah. But then I also spent some time working on the games side. So for the companies who made the games. So for two years, I worked for EA Sports, um, okay. who in the US are, are known for, you know, the golf games and the, the Madden games. And, you know, yeah. for me, it was on the, the football, the soccer game. So yeah. the FIFA brand as was, it's now uh, EA Sports FC. Uh -huh. So I worked on that game for two years. I had responsibility for a 200,000 uh, user forum and community, wow. created the first influencer program, got death threats because the game was broken, you know, all these sorts of things. Um, so, yes, I did also work on the, the side involved in creating the games. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, I worked with a client who uh, 
who also was reliant upon events, live events, sporting events. Uh, they do awards and, and things like that. And so, yeah, it was very challenging uh, with uh, with that period of time during the pandemic uh, with people who, had, who were reliant upon events. And so you had to get very creative. So uh, kudos to you for uh for coming up with a solution for that that's 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 working for you so what were some of those other businesses that you had were was it was it around the the coaching of parents so my first business was 2007 okay um straight out of university so i'd been doing things from the age of 16 is when I talk to people, I say my entrepreneurial journey started at the age of 16. Yeah. I was again, helping set up events within the, the gaming space. There were community oh, okay. based events. Um, so casual in, in nature. And I was you know doing that and getting involved in some of the other things I was writing online for you know, what you would say is a, like a news portal or a, or a website. Mm-hmm. Um, so 2007 to 2009, it was consultancy on the industry for corporates and, and brands. Uh, so that was the first one until the financial crash in 2009, uh, which is when I actually then moved across to work for EA Sports. The second one was uh, a mobile app platform that I created also in the games industry, because that's my background, uh, yeah. 2015 to 2017. Um, the goal for that was to help teams and events organizers engage and monetize their fans because they were building audiences on Facebook and on Twitter and and various other social platforms, but they had no understanding of who those fans were. There was no data there that was being shared by those platforms. So the whole goal of what I was creating was to say, look, if you can bring them onto your own branded mobile app, you can access that data. You can understand their behavior. You can then monetize them. It started well, got a couple of teams on board. We were starting to get the data and the audience on, and then both of those teams got acquired. One got acquired by the Philadelphia 76ers um, and, again, stopped their mobile strategy. Another one got acquired by a slightly different U.S. sports team, but also stopped their mobile strategy. So suddenly I had a business and a platform, and I was like, I've gone from two clients and some interesting business development conversations to no clients and case studies, and I'm also in the wrong part of the world because – by this time, I'd moved from the UK to Dubai in the UAE. So it was like, I'm now in a very tricky p- position because it's like, how do I grow my business if I can't have that face time and those meetings with my ideal clients? Obviously, this is before the world became fully reliant on Zoom as we had through COVID. So yeah. there was that reluctance to say, yeah, let's do all the business over over calls. So yeah, I ended up closing that business down as well. The most recent one I've changed and evolved largely because of COVID. The work that I've done over the years has been project-based. I've realized that's actually not the best business model. So now I'm creating the assets, the coaching, the courses, the book, you know, what are the assets that I can create once and then have permanently available? So I've completely restructured my business, the the focus of what it is that I spend my time on so that I can take the business forward and create the leverage that will enable me to find my own freedom, which is obviously what the book is about as well. And then say, right, I'm building a business in a way where it may not need all of my time or energy and it's not project-based where you know okay this one's finished what's your next project oh i don't know i haven't had the time to go and do business development and that's a situation that i found myself in before so yeah all of these things have led to this point now to say i need a different business model and that's some of the stuff that i talk about in the book right well you know what's interesting is even though you um the live events live events are coming back people people really do want to see each other in person. And so that that's coming back. Uh, my client with the, the sporting events that's, that's coming back, but it's changed. It's changed quite a bit. And, uh, the, the remote work is definitely here to say, stay. Uh, but a lot, there's a lot to, uh, lots going on with, with virtual events. So your, your skills with creating virtual events and also your marketing, uh, gathering the data and the audience insights and things like that uh, will serve you well, I think, with with growing your business, with uh, with and, and maybe doing events online that uh, that that uh, you could leverage. Like you said, you had successful, obviously successful events. Uh, I'm a musician. And so I've been doing similar things uh, with events, hosting events so that I could perform. 
uh, as a performer and uh, entrepreneur also. So I've been I've been kind of a similar, uh, not in gaming but in music. So uh, there's there's a little bit of similarity there. Uh, so what was the particular aha moment in your life that led to create the Twelve Chains of Freedom? You kind of mentioned that, but maybe we could talk a little bit more about what those chains are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I, I did briefly touch on it. Yeah. And you've just you know mentioned about doing virtual events. So that's exactly what I was in the process of creating. It's a, okay. It was a four-day virtual event for parents. So you know, day one oh. was going to be, okay, here's screen time. Day two was going to be, okay, here's managing online safety. Day three was going to be, okay, different topic. And so I was oh, in the okay. process of creating that sort of, it was a virtual challenge, four-day challenge. Uh-huh. And as I was creating the slides, it was like, okay, these are things that I'd been thinking about from the conversation that I had with parents and the feedback and, and various other things. So my book had already launched at this point. Okay. So that first book, Watchers Play, launched at the end of 2022. This okay. challenge that I was creating was on the back of that. I'd been going and doing workshops in schools and getting more feedback and having conversations. And so I was then preparing this four-day online challenge for parents. So mm-hmm. I was starting to add more material to it. It's, again, it's like, okay, how can I add more value what's going to be important for the audience to know and okay. think about and that's it. as i was writing the slides is like ah, yeah okay how can i present this key point ah model and framework which is something that i you know learned from russell brunson and reading his books and, and yeah. everything else it's like okay if you can create that modality of teaching that says it's a model or a framework even if you get a question from the audience you can go back to oh step two or i'm on step three right let's just carry on from so i then started creating these models and frameworks so that's what i was creating for the slides for this four-day online challenge okay as i looked at it as again it it was almost that light bulb moment because it's like oh fear well yes hang on i've worked through fear to write and publish my first book okay right so i've done that (laughs) one oh perception well perception perception is a chain but i've also worked through that in my own life because i normally wear bright flowery shirts i should actually have worn one today um mm-hmm. you know i you mentioned pink shorts yes i went i was a guest speaker at an event in dubai i was on a panel three guys were sat with me there was a guy from google um who did game marketing so you know, games that listed on the app store and various other places supports the marketing for those as a guy who supports companies to make their own game experiences. And then there's somebody else, a game developer, and they were all wearing jeans and a black t-shirt. And I was sat there in a flowery shirt and pink shorts because it was (laughs) 6 p.m. in Dubai and it was quite warm. So, you know, perception was like, I've already worked through this chain. On an early date with with my better half, I wore yellow trousers because it's like, I don't worry about what other people think of me in terms of what I wear. There's bigger things for me to worry about. So it was like, ah, I can, as I created this framework and this model of the 12 chains, it's like, yes, I've worked through some of these in my own life. Some of them I've worked through and they've come back because I've made progress. I, you know, I've moved to, to the next level or I've started focusing on something different. So it, it almost was that aha moment to say, here's something that I can use. And if I can use it and recognize myself in these chains, maybe other people can also get benefit from this. So that's what started that shift of focus to say, okay, let's flesh these out a bit more. I did research, you know, I talked to people about their dreams, their goals, the things that are holding them back and and got some inputs. People I interviewed got their stories of situations that they'd been through, you know, car accidents and moving country and, you know, working construction to setting up a coaching business and moving to Thailand, all of these sorts of things. Cause then I then layered them around the chains that I, had identified and that's what's gone into the new book so yeah i guess creating the slides and creating that framework and model was almost the the aha moment taking a step back and looking at it and having that realization so it wasn't a, you know a super fireworks lights flashing type of moment it was more <laughs> a oh whoa actually hmm there's something a little different here i can use this in a different way i could still use it for the parenting stuff but yeah, I could also yeah. see that it had application elsewhere. And so that's the direction that I've now started to move in. And so who who is this uh, is this framework in this book for? I know it can be for everyone, but who are you focusing on? 
So I'm focusing primarily on those people who feel stuck and frustrated in their lives currently. They may be in a corporate job. They may want to break free and set up their own business. So starting their entrepreneurial journey. You know, if you're a six and seven and eight figure coach, there may be chains that it's going to be useful for you to identify and break through. But I suspect somebody at that early stage on their journey may need to break through a couple more. Ah, you know, the fear of posting on social media, the fear of getting on video, the fear of having conversations with family about the changes that you want to make and setting up a business, you know, all of these sorts of things. This is what the framework is, is all about. So I would say it's those people who have a vision and dream for their lives. They don't yet feel comfortable working towards that or they don't know the next step to take. And those people who have recognized they want to set up their own project, they want to be their own boss, they want to have their own business. Again, some of the things that they may need to break through to start taking those steps in a different direction. And what do you think are the um, the most kind of overwhelming? Uh, you, you mentioned fear of posting on, on social media. I think fear of visibility, uh, for uh, especially for entrepreneurs starting out, Many art entrepreneurs are a technician. Uh, like I'm, I'm a an IT professional by uh, by trade, and have worked for companies, you know, like you, uh, big companies, and uh, and so there's there's a lot to being able to do things, and a lot of entrepreneurs will are the technician that can do this particular work, whether it be marketing or, uh, you know. Uh, providing providing some sort of service or building building things or creating things people create knives they create uh woodwork all kinds of things like that and but then when they have to be visible and market themselves they uh or or be seen as the as the face of their company that 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 they've uh, they've created for themselves basically they've created a job for themselves they don't and and they now they realize that oh i have to be I have to be out there. And so what are, what are some of those fears? I know that fears that I've experienced is, is that because I am a technician and, uh, but I'm also a performer and a a drummer and uh, a singer. So, uh, but being, being out in front of the drum set and, uh, and being visible somehow is different. So what are some of those chains that, that really are critical to, to break free to, as an entrepreneur starting out? Um, well, I think fear is one of the chains itself. And so that comes in, in many different forms. You mentioned it there, the visibility. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You know, that's one instance. But the key thing is that fear often is just an image that we create of the worst thing that could happen. So yeah. in my book, I write the example of skydiving. Okay. I was fearful of skydiving because I'd created the image of my head of going splat of the parachute not opening and me hitting the ground and we're like, right, that's it. That's, that's it. It's game over. I'm done. And so I was fearful of that because of the image that I created. And I think that's the same with a lot of entrepreneurs. And one of the things that I had to break through, you know, I set myself the challenge to post a two minute video every day for a year, just to be able to break through and say, I need to feel more comfortable on camera. I need to get out there. I need to be more visible. I know there may be some people who, give me negative comments or I may not get the views and there may not be millions of views and an audience that may <laughs> yeah. happen over time. It may not, but I have to work through this. I have to take that step. And if we can recognize that a lot of the time, it is just a picture that we're creating of the worst case scenario yeah. that enables us to reframe things. You mentioned there the drum set, which is great because it's like, now you're focusing on something that's specific to you and that you understand and you feel comfortable with. So how can we reframe some of these other situations to be more comfortable? One of the ones for, I'd say for entrepreneurs is you have a fear of visibility, but if you're currently in a nine to five, you've already had to do that. You've had to apply for jobs and had to have interviews, which means you've had to gain visibility of who you are, the skills and experience that you have for somebody to recruit you. Now the situation, yeah. okay, is slightly different because you may be selling a product or a service rather than you as a potential employee, but the processes are very similar. Mm-hmm. And if you can frame it in that way and say, okay, maybe I am just, you know, I'm applying for somebody's money in their wallets and 
you know, I want them to buy my product or service. Here's the value I'm going to give them. And that's another key consideration is how can you ensure that the value that you're providing is sufficient that somebody is going to be willing to exchange money with you? Yeah. But if we can start to reframe some of those images in our minds, it becomes easier to break through that chain of fear. And I like how you use that idea of, okay, I've already I've already done this in, uh, in another way. And uh, reframing it so that it makes it less um, less less unknown, less of an unknown. That's what we we're afraid of. We uh, we don't really know what the outcome is going to be, and so we 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 invent, like you said, the worst case scenarios in our brains that uh, that probably will never happen. And uh, one of my uh, one of my friends, uh, Sylvain Hash, he he was on my sly. He was on my show. And uh, he was talking about um, these conditions in our mind are what is more real. And he would he would have you hold a pen, uh, and I don't have a pen with me, but I have a mouse. You know, uh, you hold up the pen, and he say, "Which is more real, the pen or that thought in your head about what could happen?" And it's it's a matter of reframing it. And and. The, I've seen some transformation happen because of that. And I use that in my own life because it's so powerful to say, okay, well, this thing is tangible, that thought in my head. And I know that thoughts are things from Napoleon Hill. Uh, thoughts can become things, but they don't have to. You don't have to bring them to life. And sometimes when we focus on those fears, we uh, we tend to attract them to us. Those things that that we're afraid of, we attract them. So, uh, so reframing exactly them. <laughs> yeah, so that's exactly what he, he writes about is that if you have those negative thoughts, those are the things that will be attracted to you and right. you know will come to be. So if you can reframe and think about the positives. So if we take a step back, one of the greatest fears, you know, in terms of the research and, and everything that we understand, public speaking. Yeah. Getting on stage, being in front of an audience, and that fear of they're going to fall asleep. They're going to laugh at me. Everybody's going to ignore me. You know, I'm going to fall up the steps as I walk on stage. You know, all of these things <laughs> yeah. get put into the fear of, of public speaking. The other side of that is this is how I make an impact. This is how I contribute. This is how I can potentially change somebody's life. So if you think about the positive, this could be the catalyst to whatever it is that you want to achieve. You may have to take that action. You have to get up on stage. And it's something that I experienced myself. I used to do seminars when I was employed in a business many years ago. I used to do one every month. And then I stopped for many years because I didn't feel comfortable with it because then I was I was my own boss, so I didn't do it. More recently, it's like, I've got a message. I'm trying to help people. One of the only ways I'm going to be able to do that is getting up on stage. So I've put myself purposefully into positions to say, it's not comfortable yet. I'm not amazing at this, but I have something that can help someone, whether it's a service, whether it's, you know, a message. One of the ways to deliver this is to get up on stage. And so I've pushed myself to take those opportunities as they've come to say, the more I do it, the more comfortable it will become. I'll expand my comfort zone. I will know what to expect. I will know what message I'm going to deliver. And so over time, my goal is to become more comfortable at that. And again, break free of that fear and, and that worry of what the audience is going to think. Part of my business, the new structure, I'm planning to do my own live events. So we mentioned the virtual, yes, yeah. but I'm also planning on doing the live physical events. So I'm already starting to think about, okay, how can I make this an awesome experience for the audience? But how can I also make it comfortable for me? What are the things that I want to include into this experience that I can go, that's me. This is what I'm all about. Okay. Now I have a comfort factor, you know, rather than somebody coming to you and going, can you present on topic X, Y, and Z? And you're like, mm, well, I have some knowledge about that and some experience, but I'm not super comfortable. And you, you're automatically on the back foot because it's yeah. like, this isn't my area of genius. This is not my specialism. So you already go into that situation hesitant and you do yourself a disservice. So yeah. part of the thinking is, okay, again, how can you set yourself up for success in whatever it is? Public speaking is the thing we're talking about right now, but it actually goes for absolutely anything that we want to do. And being an entrepreneur sometimes is about that. Short term, we may have to do things that aren't comfortable, or we have to put ourselves in positions that aren't comfortable until we can get to a point that says, 
you know what, actually now I can just focus on what's right for me. Yeah. And I like how you, you put yourself into those uncomfortable situations. Sometimes, especially as an entrepreneur, we have to do that. But uh, remember that when you're an entrepreneur there, you have all this life experience behind you. You've done all these things already. Like you said, uh, you've, you maybe you've gotten married, maybe you've had children, maybe you've uh, applied for a job and you've got a job, maybe you've been fired from a job, maybe you had to overcome some sort of sickness or uh, other kinds of physical challenges like a broken neck. Uh, those things, uh, those are all experiences that you can draw from as, as an entrepreneur, you know, and uh, so feeling comfortable maybe isn't isn't what you should aspire to. Uh, being uncomfortable, I, I think, sometimes uh, brings about the most growth. Don't you agree? Yeah, I, I get multiple ways of looking at it. You see that yeah. you, you feel uncomfortable, you just take the action, or you feel comfortable with discomfort, in which case, you, again, you know it's always going to be there, and you just say, you know what, I'm going to suck at this. Whatever it is that I'm trying to do, first and foremost, it's going to be horrible. I'm going to yeah. feel icky about it. I know it's something that I need to do. I'm just going to have to take the action until it becomes comfortable. So if you know that's likely to be the situation going in, you can become comfortable with the fact that it's going to be horrible to start with. You take the action and then it will improve from there. Right. And so we, we've we been talking about these 12 chains and we, we focused a lot about it on fear. What are some of the other ones that uh, that come up regularly? And there are so many of them. What are... What are a couple of them that people should start with? So we briefly touched on perception as well. So that's one of the other chains. Yeah. You know, I talked about wearing bright colored shirts and pink shorts and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, so two of the others. And uh, the way that I talk about it in the book is there are three levels of chains. So there's okay. level one, which are the chains about self-directed action. Okay. I'm going to touch on two of those in a minute. Level two is about the external influences. And then level three is about the mental images. So fear and perception fit within level three. Okay, right. Those are the things that are more the mind and the images that we create. Mm -hmm. So the chains at level one and some of the ones that are the easiest to break, that's why they're at level one, knowledge and relationships. Knowledge, because we often think that we have all the knowledge that we need. And it's very rarely true. Very rarely true, yeah. <laughs> so to break the knowledge chain, we need to identify the knowledge that we need and then work to go and get it. It may be a course, it may be a book, but you know the, the exercise that I take people through because it's about that future vision, the goals and the life that they want to live, sometimes it's, you want to live on a desert island. Well, okay, maybe there's a gap there about immigration and tax laws and buying property. It's all still knowledge that you need to gain. So it may not necessarily be directly related to business, but as a person, there may be knowledge that you need to gain. Maybe you need to gain an understanding of the rules for the game your child plays on the sports field so that you can actually have a conversation with them. That's still knowledge that you need to gain. So knowledge is one of the chains that holds us back because we often think we have all the knowledge that we need. Another one I mentioned is relationships. Whether it's personal relationships, business relationships, doesn't matter. We're all still dealing with people but we are not meant to connect with everyone. There'll just be different experiences, yeah. different ways of viewing the world. There'll be just something that we feel, ah, you know what, I just don't connect with this person. That's okay. And one of the things that we sometimes need to do is we need to do that exercise of, is this person right for me? Are they adding value? Do I have that connection? Do I feel comfortable spending time with them? Because if you don't, maybe that's a sign that you need to spend less time. And again, that's an exercise I take people through. In the past, I've had to effectively fire clients, even some of my biggest clients, because it's like, every time they call and I can see the caller ID on my phone, I get the shivers. I'm like, oh my God, what are they going to ask me now? And it's like, that's not <laughs> yeah. a positive relationship. That's right. not how I should be spending my time or my energy. And so relationships are another chain that can hold us back. We need to do that assessment and say, are there people here that are draining me that make me feel like, oh, the, spending time with this person just doesn't do it for me. Right. Okay, maybe we need to make some changes. So those are two chains at, at level one because we have control there. It's self-directed actions. Do we choose to spend time with this person? Yes or no. 
Do we choose to put ourselves in a situation where that person may be? Do we choose to gain the knowledge that we need to do something new, to expand ourselves, to experience different things? So those are a couple of the other chains that I talk about in the book. Yeah, and I like I like those. Uh, I, I'm a um, lifetime learner. And uh, so I totally can relate to that. Uh, the 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 relationships is, can be difficult, especially when uh, when you're when you're uh, more experienced in life. You've been around for a, for a while. You've had you've maybe had some relationships that have failed. Uh, you certainly have uh, uh, maybe have had had a past where uh, you've had some bad influences in your life, and you and you had to uh, to break those ties. And uh, sometimes it's family. And it is some- absolutely it is, and sometimes they can be the worst. Yeah, <laughs> because you 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 also feel like paying your dues is not quite the right terminology, but hopefully you can get a sense of what I'm I'm referencing there. It's like, oh, it's family. I I should do this. You know, I should toe the party line. I should get involved. But still, you are your own person. At the end yeah. of the day, if you and you know one of the the people I spoke to for my book, she's a, a lady. She talked about people pleasing and actually how it impacted yeah. her corporate career because she was a people pleaser. And if she didn't people please, she would probably have got further up the ladder that she was aiming for. But in her personal life as well, saying yes to everybody else and making sure that they were all comfortable was having a negative impact on her because of the way that she felt. And so although it can sometimes be family, we still have to make a decision that sits with us because otherwise we will go out of that family situation. We may go back to what, you know, if we're visiting family over Christmas as an example or Thanksgiving and any of the holidays, it's like, okay, I feel like I should do this, but actually I don't want to do the six hour drive and spend, you know, 96 hours with uncle so-and-so and, and, you know, who it's just like, it, it doesn't make me feel good. I feel I should do it just to keep everybody else happy, but I'm going to spend that time. And then at the end of it, I'm just going to be like, I feel horrible. And you, it's yeah. important to ask yourself that question because it's like, will they still accept you if you say no? If it's family, they probably will. Okay. So then yeah. it comes down to, are you pleasing them or are you protecting yourself? Who is more important? Right. If you don't protect yourself and you screw yourself over, then what have you got? Nothing. Right. And you can't get that time back. No. <laughs> so, yeah. So what are some of the surprising moments that you've uh, you've you've mentioned you've worked with some clients have you worked with other people on this with this framework can you talk about some of the some of the challenges they had and maybe some surprising results that they've gotten Yeah so a couple of people uh, I've worked with them as I've been writing the book and and going through and you know getting their feedback and some of the exercise so for context the book it talks about the four or chain, uh, sorry, the 12 chains and then the four steps of breaking a chain, but I also include exercise and activities to do so that I'm guiding people through the process in the same way that I would as if I was coaching them directly. So okay. some of the people who've, who've been involved in the process of writing the book, the early readers, I've been working with them to say, okay, yes, here's one of the chains. Here's the activity and the exercise. Okay. What have you found? What have you liked? You know, what's changed for you? So some of them, <clears throat> they've seen massive changes. One of the ladies that was been involved she sent me a message the other day saying i went through the exercise again and it was actually the the chain around perception Uh and she was like the story that you gave so different stories from my life in the book the story that you gave made me think it actually triggered me Okay. I then sat for a long time and journaled about it and how this chain is impacting my life. And then I made a decision and took an action and went and requested a meeting with someone who I wanted to meet for ages, but I was too scared. Uh Because I'd done the exercise and understood the chain, I was like, I can't be scared anymore because I'm not going to get what it is that I want. So she went, she made that request. She actually set up a meeting for the next day. So she was able to start taking that immediate action because she understood the chain. She'd recognized how it was presenting in her own life. And she was like, I can see this is not helping me. I need to start taking a different path. She took the action, requested the meeting, and so she's got that set up. So there are things like that that, you know, 
And that's been the goal is to help people go, okay, I understand the chain. What does this look like in my own life? Okay, now how can I start making changes? Another one, because convenience is also one of the chains at okay. level one. So the self-directed actions. Do we have the extra slice of pizza? Do we spend the extra hour watching Netflix? How mm. do we use our time? How do we use our, our energy and our resources? And so, again, her feedback was convenience. I can recognize it in my own life. And the silly thing is, the amount of time and energy that I spend on watching an extra episode and you know just chilling when I get home from work, it's probably not that much different than if I was to focus on something productive like growing a business. Mm-hmm. So that realization for her is like, well, I can sit on a sofa and I can do nothing that's productive, or I can use the same amount of energy to actually do something. And it may be gaining the knowledge to take her next step using that same energy to move herself forward. So she's now starting to put together a plan of, okay, what are the things that I want to do? How am I going to use my time differently? That same energy that I was, I now recognize I was wasting. If I was to spend just an hour and evening on something else, what is it that I could do? How can I use that time productively? So it's great to, to get this feedback from people that I'm working with as they're going through the exercises and you know understanding the chains and then working to to break free of them well i like the uh I, I like the idea of taking that time that's unproductive like scrolling or watching a, a netflix movie or, or whatever it might be uh scrolling on social media and just endlessly go, going through youtube shorts uh which is a a pastime that i i kind of enjoy uh but you know there are once you say oh gosh i just spent two hours doing this i could have been doing this i could have been doing that and so make actually analyzing what you're doing and and doing a self self self-assessment and and giving yourself feedback on on what you're doing sounds like a, a really really um fruitful process and so as we uh, as we wrap up because we're we're kind of at the top of our time together uh this has been very fascinating uh phil i really appreciate uh what you've done so far as we wrap up with uh final your final words what are three things that our audience can uh can do today to put these ideas into action so the first one I would say is related to business. So think about the type of business. If you're an entrepreneur, think about the type of business that you want to create, not just now, but also for the long term. Is it going to be something that's going to suck all of your time up? Because then you're giving yourself a job. Right. And that's one of the things I talk about in my book and I've recognized for myself and why I've made changes in the business. So I'm now creating assets rather than trying to do projects because projects don't necessarily build for the long term. So that's something for for entrepreneurs to think about, like assets, like courses and things like like that that you can yeah. you can deliver without having to be one on one. Yeah, I, I, again, depending on the nature of the business, it may be you know here's your ten step onboarding process that you can give to someone. Here's a worksheet or you know a, a a tool in an Excel document that somebody can take from you, so that you don't need to spend the time with them. You've created yeah. it; they can then use it and get the value from it. You've created it once, you've freed up your time. You don't need to spend that time with every client or on every project. So it's things like that. Yeah. So it's, uh-huh. it's assets. They may be directly generating revenue like a course, but it could also be about the processes and thinking about how you can streamline those so you don't need to spend your time on every step and, and be involved in everything. Right, like the exercises in your book for each of those yeah. steps. Right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. The second one would be thinking about the chains, okay, uh, slightly biased because of the, the experience that I've been through and recognizing them in my own life. But if you can uncover those and recognize them, it actually enables you to start moving forward. You know, you can be like, ah, okay, yeah, which relationships are draining me? Which knowledge do I need to gain? How am I spending my time? Am I worried about what other people think of me? And is that holding me back And the perception chain? You know, all of these things, if we can understand them, it's like anything in life. What's been seen cannot be unseen. So once you've uncovered them <laughs> yeah. and, you, and you understand them, yeah. whether you choose to do anything about them or not, that's up to you. But at least you'll have the knowledge of saying, I now know what these chains are. Right. I'm empowered to either work with them and break through them or just say, yeah, not for me. Fair enough. And 
which is fine. I'm not going to take offense. I, I'm working through them in my own life and I'll keep doing that. But yes, that's one of the things that I would say is try and work out for you what it is that's holding you back. Maybe one chain, maybe multiple. It may be something completely different. I would say just have a look at them because there may be things in there that you can recognize and, and start making changes around. And then the third one, focus on your core area of genius if you can. And yeah. keep that in mind because there will always be something that you feel the most comfortable doing, that you enjoy spending your time on. And if you can build the business around that, everything else becomes a lot easier. Right. Well, there you have it. Finally find freedom. Uh, there, the 12 chains to, that might be holding you back. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom in there. I, um, I, I did a, 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 a summary of your book. I scanned it and uh, didn't have time to read the whole thing. Uh, but I, it's, it's really, I love frameworks. I love formulas that I can apply. Uh, I have a, a programming, uh, a software programming background and uh, creating systems and things like that. So I like formulas. Formulas, I think entrepreneurs uh, should uh, use formulas and adopt what other people have found success with um, so they don't, don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, and applying those in ways that are meaningful to you uh, is, I think, the is the key. So these this book could be for anyone, but of course, we're, we're focusing on business and entrepreneurship. And I think this would be a good resource for you. Uh, Philip is is offering a, a free copy of Finally Find Freedom, which is available on Amazon. But you can also download it at www.finallyfindfreedom.com forward slash free. And if you'd like to learn more and get more involved with, with Philip, you can go to www.freedomhuntersclub.com, which is a membership community uh, supporting people in breaking those chains, so you can actually work with with Phil and uh, Philip and uh, go through his process, explore uh, what could be uh, what may be holding you back, and maybe d discover some things that you didn't realize about uh, about yourself and about your journey and uh, um, about where you would like to go. So, uh, thanks again. Philip Ride. And remember, faith and action go hand in hand. So put the pedal to the metal. And until next time, I'm Paul Guyon and Philip Ride. Thank you so much for your time uh, today. I appreciate it. And good luck with the new book. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Thank you for tuning into the Lead Machine Growth Show with Paul Guyon, where we show you how to tackle your tech, master your message, and design your dream so that you can transform your vision into reality. Remember to visit our website at www.leadmachinegrowthshow.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Lead Machine Growth Show.